Good morning, Story Savant. So today we are going to talk about one way out of many to create really stellar characters. And it's one of my favorite ways. I've gotten many questions about how I create my characters and how I make them really, really compelling to audiences. Well, there's a lot of ways to do that. And there's not one correct answer. But this is a technique I often use to craft my character's arc and to make the story super, super compelling. So you're not going to want to miss it. Do you want to write fiction but don't know where to start? Believe me, I understand. I've stood in your shoes. I've wanted to write amazing stories and wondered if I was even on the right track. I worried and struggled for years. I know what it feels like to have no idea what you're doing. Like everything you write is cheesy and amateurish and you'll never be good enough to sit on the shelves next to the great authors of your time or the classics. But I want you to know there's an answer for you. A way to know that the stories you're writing will resonate with readers. A way to transform from wherever you are now in your writing journey to someone who's universally hailed as talented and a skilled storyteller. Welcome to The Story Savant, the podcast with free writing advice for the aspiring storyteller. I'm going to give you every tool I know to help you become a master storyteller. Every week, I'll bring you tips on story structure, characterization, themes, heroes, villains, and more to automatically make your story resonate with your audience. Stay tuned. We're going to learn to tell amazing stories, and we're going to have a ton of fun doing it. Let's do this. Okay, so what is... One tip for creating a very compelling character that audiences can really latch onto. One thing I always do is give my characters a code of ethics. Now let's define what this is. Phrasing it that way makes it sound like it must be some really formal military style code of ethics. It really doesn't have to be. When I say code of ethics, it's simply something that your character believes really strongly in. So it can be a military code of ethics. It can be something that they always do every day and so they don't believe in not doing that thing, a ritual they perform every day. Or it can be something that they don't believe in, such as they don't believe in abuse. They don't believe in killing people. They're nonviolent. But it can, again, it can be anything. If you're writing a middle grade character, their code of ethics could be that they don't eat pickles, right? This is a child. They have kind of funny codes of ethics. So it can be anything. It just needs to be something that your character believes in very strongly, very passionately, because it will inform who they are and how they make decisions in your story. Um, Let's look at some examples, as always. Once again, I'm going to use her again. Elizabeth Bennet is a great example. One of the very first things we learn about her is that she is not willing to marry for money or for convenience or just so that she's taken care of socially. She will only marry for love. And because of that, she really believes that she will become an old maid and a spinster because she knows that she is not very prone to falling easily in love. But that is what she believes and she's not going to go against it. And that absolutely does inform many of the decisions she makes in the novel. To use a middle grade example, Judy Bloom has a book called Freckle Juice. It's a book that I read so many times when I was in grade school. And it's about a boy who actually wants freckles. He's a grade schooler and he thinks freckles are cool. So he's trying to figure out how to give himself freckles. And he believes in this so deeply that his life will be better if he has freckles, that he'll do anything at all to make it happen, including listening to a not so nice classmate that kind of plays a trick on him. There's an old film, kind of old now, called LA Confidential. I know that it's based on a book and full disclosure, I have actually not read the book, but I did watch the film. It's got Russell Crowe in it. And I think he's a really good example, his character of a code of ethics. His code is that he does not hit women and he does not put up with other people abusing women. Now, maybe that's something that we would hope most people would consider a code of ethics. But number one, obviously, domestic abuse does happen. And this is actually something of a period piece. It's it's it takes place in the, uh, I want to say the 20s or the 30s. It's kind of a mobster movie. So it was at a time when domestic violence was actually more prevalent and less taboo than it is now. Now, I really love this example of code of ethics because he feels very, very strongly about it. Anytime he sees a woman even being, you know, yelled at by a man or slightly roughed up by a man, he kind of goes ballistic. There's a part where he even breaks a chair with his hands. It's like a wooden oak chair because he gets so angry about this. And then he, you know, attacks the guy that's that's kind of going after the woman. So we really love this character. He comes across as chivalrous and we're just like, yes, we are behind him, right? As the story proceeds, we find out that it's because he had an abusive father that actually killed his mother, you know, abused her until she died. And he had to basically witness that as a child. That's why he feels so strongly. Okay, that is not only a very compelling character, but it does inform how he reacts to his world and all the decisions he makes in the film. So do you understand why this is such a strong thing? So of course, the next question is, okay, we have a code of ethics for our character, something they believe in doing or perhaps don't believe in doing, but what do we do next? Well, one of the best ways I have found to create a really compelling character arc is to establish that code of ethics and establish it very, very strongly. Remember I talked about strong characters last episode? This is another example of that. It doesn't matter what the code of ethics is, 
Just make sure you establish it and establish it well for that character. Then take the character to the point where they will break it. Let me say that again. Establish what their code of ethics is, and then in the story, take them to the place where they will break it. The audience will really cling on to that. I'm not saying that they're rooting for the person to break their ethics, but I mean, it depends on what they are. Because you can do this with a villain, too. Do this with every single character that's a main character or a major player, right? Anybody that's got a big stake in the story, anything, anyone that's a point of view character, you should be doing this for. So the villain's code of ethics really might be world domination or something. Obviously, the the audience isn't rooting for that, but they do understand what his motives are, and they're waiting to see what happens when he either doesn't achieve his aims or, you know, if we're talking like a Darth Vader story, if he flips, right? That is what makes things interesting. Did you know you can work with me? I do story consulting on an hourly basis, so if you want help developing your story to make sure it will be a winner, go to my website at www.authorlkhill.com forward slash work with me to learn more. See you there! So let me give you a couple of more examples about this. One of my favorite films, pretty much of all time, is a Mel Gibson film from 10 or 15 years ago called We Were Soldiers. And in it, we have a particular soldier (laughs) who is played by Sam Elliott. We all love Sam Elliott, and this is a very classic Sam Elliott role. He's really gruff and mean. Um, He's, of course, one of the senior soldiers, uh, and he helps to train Mel Gibson's squad of young, you know, private first-class soldiers, and they're going into the Vietnam War. There's one young guy in particular played by a very young Ryan Hurst, who decides that he is going to sort of befriend Sam Elliott's character. Now, this is his senior officer, so I don't think he's planning to be super chummy with him, but no matter how mean Sam Elliott is to him, he's always nice back and trying to get Sam Elliott to respond to him in a way that is friendly. Well, it doesn't work. Again, very typical Sam Elliott. He'll, you know, they'll pass each other, and Ryan Hurst will say just something like, good day, General. And Sam Elliott will respond with, how do you know what kind of day it is? You know, he's always mean to him. And uh, another time he says beautiful morning and sam elliott goes uh oh, you're are you an effing weatherman now yeah i'm not gonna actually swear but that's what he says in the film <laughs> and so it's, it's of course it's comic relief it's very funny but it's also kind of unbeknownst to the audience establishing that this is the way sam elliott is this is his character and we don't really see the payoff for this until about three quarters of the way through the film now this is a war movie just to let you know it's very gory war movie and a lot has happened later on in the film they've been on the battlefield they've lost a lot of soldiers They've lost a lot of men, a lot of friends, and Ryan Hurst's character actually gets stuck behind enemy lines for um, about 24 hours. And the enemy doesn't know he's there. He's hiding behind enemy lines and just trying not to be found out, because if they find him, they'll either kill him, most likely, or possibly make him a POW, but, you know, most people were just being shot. So it's extremely stressful. He had to stay there hiding with the enemy all around him and just hope they didn't find him all night long. A little bit of spoilers, he does actually make it back to camp and isn't discovered. Um, And when he does, he basically sits down and starts crying just from the stress of the battle. You know, I'm sure we can all can't really understand, but, you know, totally understandable. And at that point, Sam Elliott's character looks down at him and says, now today is a good day. And I remember watching that and just going, wow, what a payoff, because we suddenly understand the reason he was being so mean. And now maybe we're not behind that. Maybe that wasn't cool of him to be so mean to the young soldier. But for Sam Elliott's character, in his mind, a good day is only a day on which you can fight for your country. He is a career soldier, and he obviously thinks that these young men, you know, most of whom are probably 18, these, you know, private first-class soldiers, they've never seen nothing. They've never been into war. They've never had a fight for their country, and he does not respect them. But once they've been in war, once they've lost people, once they've actually been on the front lines fighting now, today is a good day. And there will always be respect between him and that young officer from from then on. So in this case, it wasn't so much that they took him to the point where he broke his code of ethics. I don't think he's the type of character that would ever break that particular code of ethics. But it does take us to a place where it explains his code of ethics and why he is that way. But again, they don't have to sit down and have a really on the nose discussion about it. It's through his actions and through his words that the audience will come to understand who he is and why he was behaving that way at the beginning of the show. Another example I'm going to address real fast is Lost. Who watched Lost? (laughs) I did, and I liked it while I was watching it. I know a lot of people had a lot of issues with the ending. I was like, 
so-so on the ending. It was okay. But there was definitely some issues with it. But they did a lot of things really well, which is why people kept coming back to the show. Obviously, they created mystery, and that was part of the problem is they didn't always pay it off. But things that they did do really well are this characterization through strong codes of ethics and synecdoche, which I won't get into synecdoche today. If you don't know what it is, it's like an egghead English word. But let's talk about John Locke. At one point in the story, and anyone who watched it will know what I mean, he started pushing the button. Every 90 minutes, this button reset or needed to be reset, and he just had to be there to push it. And if you haven't seen the show, just hearing that It's probably going to sound a little weird. He was doing this every 90 minutes around the clock. It had to be pushed. And he believed strongly that it needed to be pushed, obviously, or he wouldn't have kept doing it. Okay, so that, it didn't start out that way, but that became his code of ethics to be there pushing the button. Then, as the story proceeds, we start to see him go through a crisis of faith. It happens over kind of, you know, this is a long form series. It happens over a lot of episodes. And he gets to a point where he decides not to push the button. That was a really compelling storyline because we could see him starting to wonder what would happen if he didn't push it. We could see him start starting to doubt his own beliefs. And the audience is there watching him, wondering what's happening. And they did take him to the point where he decided not to push the button. And what happened? Well, I'm not going to spoil, but let's just say all hell broke loose. (laughs) Okay, that's a really good example of what I mean by figure out their code of ethics, establish it strongly. And one thing Lost did well, too, was backstory. They used his backstory to show mistakes he'd made in the past. They did this with all the characters and how it informed their decisions in the present on the island. So we understand, you know, whether we agree or not, that's not the point. We understand why he's doing what he's doing, why it makes sense in his mind. And that is because of this code of ethics. That's what the code of ethics helps you do is flesh out the character for the audience so that, again, even if it's a villain or even if it's a flawed decision, even if it's a really flawed code of ethics, because maybe you have someone who believes in, you know, punching someone in order to make a point or believes in corporal punishment or something. Okay, we don't agree with that. But if we see a backstory, we go, okay, well, it's a flawed belief. It's incorrect. But I understand why he does that. I understand what his logic is in his mind or hers. And they did that well with John Locke. And then they did take him to the point where he broke the code of ethics. So he didn't push the button. And that played into the plot of the story in a huge way. Okay, that is a really well told story that the audience will latch on to. So even if you had problems with the end of Lost and where it went, there were definitely aspects of their storytelling that were really, really on point. Okay, so that's about all I have for today. I hope this is helpful to you. You know, go look at all of your characters. Again, you should do this with all the major players, all the point of view characters. You know, you don't have to do it for like John Usher, who's setting up the chairs at the wedding. Obviously, you don't have to do these for the stock characters or the flat characters, but any important character, you need to know their code of ethics um, because it so much informs what they're going to do in the story. So go back to your story, figure out what their code of ethics is, and see if it changes your story or especially their reactions in scenes at all. And again, for all of you who might not be writing right now, go find your favorite story, your favorite TV show, your favorite movie, and pick out your favorite character and try to nail down what their code of ethics is and how it creates their reaction to events in the story. It's really interesting to uh, sit down and deconstruct construct your favorite stories that way. All right, everyone have a great day. If you would like to support the show as a patron, hop over to www.patreon.com forward slash story savant. If you're big on Facebook, join our Facebook community at bit.ly forward slash story savant Facebook. To get a free PDF of my nine essential plot points for a page turning story, sign up at bit.ly forward slash story savant courses. All these links are in the show notes. Thanks for joining me today. You can find all my fiction on my website at authorlkhill.com forward slash books. If you found value in anything you heard today, do me a favor and go leave me a review on iTunes. It's the best and easiest way that you can thank me and help others to find and be inspired by the same concepts. Together, we can lift each other through our stories to new heights of understanding and compassion for our fellow man and gain an eternal godlike perspective on our own spirituality. So go consume some stories today. I give you permission.